Okay, thanks everyone. So yes, I'm a postdoc in Mike Snyder's lab and today I'm going to talk about variant annotation using ENCODE data. In particular, I'm going to talk about RegulumDB. And I should uh, give a disclaimer, I didn't actually make RegulumDB, but I was a pretty active user for a few years. And so I have the user perspective here. And so I think that everyone's probably pretty clear on the general idea, but uh, let's go over it. So ENCODE data can provide a lot of insights into the function of non-coding variants. I think that's sort of a given here. Uh, and different people have used it for different sorts of studies. Um, people have used it to look at GWAS variants and the idea being that if you have a, a particular tag snip from a GWAS study, there may be a bunch of variants in linkage disequilibrium with that variant and you can then look it through ENCODE data and find out uh, various variants that that may be functionally relevant. And then um, there have been a number of studies on other diseases like cancer, and I had one of these, where we looked for mutations in cancer that were recurrent across whole genomes, across patients, and then you can then look to see which of these are in regulatory regions. And so uh, in this case, you also want to, you want to overlap these regions with ENCODE data to see if any of these regions are in known transcription factor binding sites. And so I have a little graphic here on the side. And so the general idea is say you have a variant here shown in red and you want to see what's happening in this region. Is it in a promoter, an enhancer, and then in particular what transcription factors are binding this region. And so there's a few great tools for looking at this sort of data. Um, one is RegulumDB, the other is Haploreg. I believe the next talk is on Haploreg. So I won't uh, talk any, any more about that really. but. Uh, Let's just go through RegulumDB. And so the first author on this paper, Alan Boyle, was the creator of RegulumDB. He had some help, as you can see here, but this was uh, his baby. And uh, I'll put his email up at the end, too. You can feel free to email me or him for if you have any questions about this. And then similarly, the next talk is about Haploreg. And so it's a, these are very similar uh, databases. And so the, the general idea here is that it's a web-based tool which provides a very simple interface for retrieving site-specific regulatory data. And so if you have a genomic position or region in the genome that you want to know more about, you can use a web interface, and I'll go through it in a minute on, uh, on the website itself, and you can input it into the database and it outputs all the bound regulatory factors and additional information uh, from the ENCODE project. And so RegulumDB has a bunch of different data types and they're all listed in the columns of this table here. It lists all the, it has all the EQTLs in there, has transcription factor binding data, mostly ChIP-seq data. It has matched transcription factor motif data, so it looks through uh, various motif data sets and I'll show those in the next slide. Um, it looks at, has DNA's footprinting data in there, it has um, DNA's peaks, et cetera. And so um, Alan actually developed a scoring system for UMDB where different combinations of, of evidence contribute to a different score and generally if you have a, a lower score there's more evidence that that region or that site is uh, has some, some regulatory factors present. And so there's a lot of data in this database and this is uh, the most recent uh, update and so you can just go through this list but there's um, many different conditions and cell lines from ENCODE and also from non-ENCODE and many different data types. So it's, it's really supposed to be a summary of all of ENCODE that's in this database. And now I want to show you a quick example of how to use it. And let's see, let's pull this up. So here's the website. Let me see it, let's zoom in. Okay, so it's regulome.stanford.edu. <laughs> Can, this is the main page. You can come here and there's some examples. So if you click, so this is where you input what, uh, what region of the genome you want to interrogate and they're new lines separated. So you can put a bunch of them in at the same time. And so each of these little hyperlinks is, will give you an example. So you can put in different, um, you can search in different ways. You can use DB SNP IDs, these are SIDs. You can use zero base coordinates. You can actually use a bed file, a VCF file, and or a GFF3 file. And so it has all these examples here so you can make sure you get the file format right. 
And so if you choose one of these or your own, uh, you can then hit submit. And let's see. If this doesn't work, I have some slides on this. But it should work because it just did. Okay, let's not do this. That's frustrating. Anyway, that would have been better, but we can just go through the slides. So after you hit submit, you'll come to a page that looks like this. And there'll be for every, um, every one of the coordinates or RSIDs that you entered, you'll have a different row. And it'll tell you that what coordinates you put in, the DB SNP ID, and then it gives you this score that I just described a minute ago. Then it'll link out to UCSC and Ensemble if you want to see a, a view in the genome browser. And then if you click on one of these guys, if you click on 2A, for example, you would then come to a new page that has a bunch of, of uh, that has all the data laid out to you visually. And so uh, here is just a genome browser view, and I believe if you click this thing, it'll also link to the, to the UCSC genome browser. And then if you scroll down, so if I sc I'm actually going to click to the next slide, you see, first you see protein binding data. So for this is for one particular site, it'll show you all the different experiments where there was overlap of, of these different chip seek peaks. So in this particular experiment in the HeLa S3 cell type, where they were doing POL-R2A chip seek, there was overlap of a peak, uh, and then uh, it also links out to the, the reference of the actual data that was used to, to call this. And then, so it has this protein binding data. It has motif data. So this is from TransFAC and Jasper, et cetera. Uh, and so it's motifs plus it's uh, where that came from. So there's also these, the different methods that were used. There's the footprinting, uh, et cetera. And in, there's also chromatin structure data. So this would be things like DNA-seq. And there's histone modification data, and et cetera, et cetera. So all those, I showed you a slide a minute ago with all those different data types. They're all, they're all here in, in uh, table format. And then, um, let's see, I should also mention, let's go back here if, to the summary slide. So, uh, this, this is the, so here, when you have all your coordinates you want to enter and you hit submit, you get to this page like this. When you hit download, you can actually download the full output. So if you say you have 10,000 of these things you want to interrogate at the same time, um, you can download and then you can get a file that looks like, like this, like this guy. Um, and so basically it has all that data in a text file so you can parse it on your own if you're so inclined. Uh, and that's actually very helpful. And if you have more than maybe 10,000 or so, in addition to having, uh, the website will break at a certain number. If you put too many into the browser, it just doesn't like it. So, um, so if that happens, you can, we have a, an API of, well, we, ha we built a little program to s scrape scrape data off of Regulum DB, and that's hosted on Alan's GitHub page, and so you can see it here. And with that, yeah, I'll take any questions. My email address is cmelton at stanford.edu, and uh, so any user kinds of questions, you can ask me, I'm happy to answer. Any questions about how it was built or the data that are in there, uh, you should ask Alan, and this is email, his email address here. Yeah, so um, I'm also a user uh, of the uh, Hubble, uh, Hubble Rec, uh, sorry, the <laughs> both, uh, Regular MDB. Uh -huh. And I uh, wanted to ask you, if I'm not wrong, the ENCODE data that is mining, it is the 2012. Is there any plan to be more updated? So, he, uh, yeah, Alan does have plans. Um, I don't know the, is Mike, I think Mike had to take off. He might know. But uh, he did update it, I know, not this last fall, but the fall before, and I think he updated this last year as well. So. So he is updating it. 
Um, yes. And he, they wrote a grant to, to continue working on it and to continue updating. So probably regardless of whether he gets that funded, he'll continue, but uh, uh, you should ask him. And uh, second question, um, this script that you mentioned right now at the end, uh, yeah. is it a programmatic way to do the same searches you can do on the web interface or just to download files? Uh, it's, it's just uh, the first one. So yeah, it'll, it basically mimics being you and going in and it, it'll, it'll parse your input file of maybe a million or tens of thousands of different new line delimited searches you wanna do and it'll put them in maybe, I, I don't remember how I did it, maybe it was a thousand or, or so at a time, maybe a hundred, whatever didn't bog down the website too much. And I'll just go through them one at a time and get the outputs, download the full outputs like I was showing you here, and it'll just do that repetitively, just one after another after another. Um, and if that script on, on there doesn't do it, I have one that does. I don't remember what we put up there, it was a while ago. So. So you can email me if it doesn't do what I just said. 